Hi, boys and girls. When I was your age, there was something I used to love to watch on TV. That thing was wrestling. My friends and I were so into wrestling that we used to pretend that we were the wrestlers and tried our best to imitate their moves. We would jump off of couches and pretend to punch each other, and eventually someone would get pinned or submit, and then our match would be over. Throughout the year, there would be special events like WrestleMania or SummerSlam. We had to pay to watch those events, so a lot of us would gather together at one person's house, and we would order pizza and other snacks, and we had a great time. During these special events, there were many matches, but there was one match that was more important than all the others. All the early matches were a warm-up for that last match. This last match was called the main event and featured the biggest superstars and the most intense rivalries. In the Gospels, we learn about a special man named John the Baptist. John was so special that Jesus said John was the greatest of all humans. John even had followers and baptized people. Despite being so great, John was not the Messiah. John was not the promised savior of Israel, but John knew who was. And this is why John told people to follow Jesus. John gladly stepped aside so that Jesus could do ministry and save people from their sin. Let's pray, and then we'll learn more about why John told people to follow Jesus. Dear Jesus, we know that there is none greater than you, for you are God. Thank you for being so humble that you would be born into this world to die for our sins. Thank you for taking the punishment that we deserve. Thank you for being our Savior. We love you, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. And this is Auntie Elena, and we'll be leading you guys in worship tonight. Our first song is If We Confess from 1 John 1, verses 8 through 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not, the truth is not in us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not, the truth is not in us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Next song will be The Mouth. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mouth speaks 
Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, the mouth speaks. Our last song is Awesome God. an awesome God He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our God is an awesome God our God is an awesome God He reigns heaven above with wisdom power and love our God is an awesome God our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Thank you, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Uncle Sean, and I'll be sharing the Bible story with you today. Before we start, we're going to pray. So let's put our hands together like this, put them in our laps, close our eyes, bow our heads, and I'll pray for us. Dear God, we thank you for this day where we can worship you and learn more about you. I pray for the boys and girls to be good listeners as we learn about how John the Baptist pointed us to the one we should be following. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, I want you to be good listeners during the Bible story. So, put on your listening ears, show me your looking eyes, and your quiet hands. And, if you're at church, make sure you follow the rules your aunties and uncles have shared with you. And why do we want to listen to the Bible story? Because we love Jesus and want to learn more about him. Can you say that again really loud? Why do we want to listen to the Bible story? Because we love Jesus and want to learn more about him. Good job. Before we start the Bible story, I have a question. When you see someone else do well, how do you feel? For example, what if one of your friends at school gets an award? Do you get jealous that they're being recognized for doing something good? Or do you congratulate them on their award? Or, what if your brother or sister shows your parents that they got a good grade on a test? Do you get jealous that your parents are giving them attention? Or do you join in and praise them for doing well on their test? Or, what if you see a friend who has a cool new toy? Do you get jealous that you don't have that toy at home? Or are you happy that your friend is able to enjoy playing with it? I hope you all picked the second responses to the questions I asked. I ask these questions because in today's Bible story, we see the people following John the Baptist questioning what the people following Jesus were doing, and we will learn what John's response was. Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside. Many people came to see Jesus, and Jesus taught them and baptized them. Nearby, John the Baptist was also baptizing people. Some of the people who were following John got into an argument. They complained that Jesus' disciples were baptizing people and following Jesus and not John. 
John told his followers, you heard me say that I am not the Messiah. I am the messenger who goes before him to announce that he is coming. We learned a couple of weeks ago that John said, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John tried to explain by describing a wedding. Do you know what a wedding is? Maybe you have gone to a wedding and were the flower girl or ring bearer. A wedding is where a man and a woman get married to each other. The man is called the groom and the woman is called the bride. The groom's friend stands with him at the wedding and he is happy to be there and hear the groom's voice. The wedding is the groom's special day. His friend should not make it about himself. This is how John felt, like the groom's friend, because he was happy that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. For you boys and girls, this is how we should feel when one of our friends gets an award, our brother or sister gets a good grade, or a friend gets a new toy. We should be happy for them and not make their special day about ourselves. John then said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Boys and girls, what do you think John meant when he said, he must increase, but I must decrease? Do you think John was saying he needed to decrease by losing weight? Maybe, but I don't think that's what John was talking about. Who is the he that John was referring to? Jesus. John was saying that Jesus needed to increase while it was time for John to decrease. John explained why Jesus was more important than himself. John was from earth, so he could only talk about things on earth. Jesus, who came from heaven, talked about things in heaven because he had seen them. Now that Jesus was on earth, John's mission was complete. John joyfully stepped aside as Jesus began his earthly ministry. All John wanted was for people to celebrate and worship Jesus. Boys and girls, how can we celebrate and worship Jesus? Well, we can pray and tell others about Jesus. We can also sing praise songs to Jesus. And by sing, I mean really sing. Next time I see you on a Sunday, I hope I can hear each of your voices. I want you to be louder than the uncles and aunties. I want your mommies and daddies to be able to hear you from big service. Boys and girls, whoever believes Jesus knows that God tells the truth. God sent Jesus to earth and Jesus speaks God's words. The father loves the son and has given him power over everything. Whoever believes in the son will have eternal life, but whoever refuses to believe in the son will face a punishment for their sins. This is what we hope for you boys and girls will come to understand that there are only two ways to live. Without Jesus, living for ourselves, which leads to death, or with Jesus, living for God's glory, which leads to eternal life. We hope for you to come to love and follow Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for today's Bible story. We thank you for sending John the Baptist to prepare us for and point us to Jesus Christ. I pray for the boys and girls to see how great Jesus is and come to trust in him as their Lord and Savior. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In the last month, along with learning about Jesus, we've been hearing a lot about John the Baptist. Like Jesus, John had a miraculous birth from very old parents. He also was a prophet and had many people following him. People saw that John was an important man who spoke God's word. But as we know, the main character of the Bible isn't John the Baptist. It's the Messiah, Jesus. In the passage we'll hear about today, John 1, 19 to 28, John uses the illustration of a wedding party. About two years ago, I was part of my brother's wedding. Everyone was calling me the best man of the party. I gave a speech and people listened, laughed and cried at it. Everyone was focused on me for five minutes. The wedding wasn't about me. The speech wasn't about me. I was pointing to the real best man of the wedding, my brother and his wife. In our lesson today, we'll see how John also points to Jesus, the Messiah.
Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside. People came to see them, and Jesus taught the people. Many people were baptized. Nearby, John the Baptist was baptizing people too. Some of the people who followed John got into an argument. They went to John. Teacher, they said, remember the man you talked about, the one who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River? His disciples are baptizing people and people are starting to follow him. John's followers were talking about Jesus. John answered them, you heard me say that I am not the Messiah. I am the messenger who goes before him to announce that he is coming. This was true. John had said, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John tried to explain by talking about a wedding. When two people get married, the man who marries the bride is the groom. His friend stands with him at the wedding and he is happy to be there and hear the groom's voice. John also knew that a wedding is the groom's special day. The groom's friend should not make it about himself. This was how John felt, like a groom's friend, because he was happy that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. John said, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. Then John explained why Jesus was more important than himself. John was from the earth, and he could only talk about things on earth. Jesus, the one who comes from heaven, talked about things in heaven because he had seen them. Still, no one believed what Jesus said. Whoever believes Jesus knows that God tells the truth. God sent Jesus to earth, and Jesus speaks God's words. The Father loves the Son and has given him power over everything. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life, but whoever refuses to believe in the Son will not have eternal life. He will never be able to get away from God's judgment. John the Baptist told people to get ready for Jesus, the promised Messiah. Now that Jesus was on earth, John's mission was complete. Jesus was greater than John, and John joyfully stepped aside as Jesus began his earthly ministry. John the Baptist was a man who is worthy of respect. In Matthew 11, Jesus even said that nobody greater than John had been born before him because he was a prophet who was able to see what he was prophesying about in person, unlike the prophets of the Old Testament. But even John could not know the entire greatness of Jesus. From God's promise to Adam about crushing the head of the serpent and his promise to bless all the nations through Israel and the promise that the Messiah would come through the lineage of the warrior King David, many Jews of Jesus' time thought that the Messiah would be a conquering king who would defeat the mighty Roman Empire, then the whole world. But Jesus is bigger than they could ever imagine. In Matthew 11, after praising John, Jesus says that those of us after him who are part of the kingdom of heaven are even greater than John the Baptist. That's because we are able to know God's full plan of redemption and conquering of sin. The main antagonist of the Bible isn't the Roman Empire or even Satan, it's sin. As we continue to learn about the Bible, we'll learn of God's great redemption story. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for allowing us to know your word and be able to know Jesus more. We pray that you would help us to desire, not for us to be great, but for Jesus to be great in and through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hi, this is Auntie Helen again. Uh, welcome back. We are going to be making a craft for this lesson where John pointed to Jesus, and this is what our final product, product is gonna look like. Okay, so this is the material we need. We need the printout of picture of John the Baptist, uh, string, camel colored hair is, a string color would be good, but if you don't have it, 
Uh, this is the closest I could find, so this is what we have. If you have brown felt, you can use that too, or if you don't have any yarn or felt, you could just uh, use crayon, that'll be fine. And then we need crayon and we need uh, scissors for cutting the yarn and then we need glue, okay? So first, what's easier is I'm going to color John the Baptist. So I'm gonna use like skin color, whatever skin color you wanna choose. Now remember, Auntie Helen is not the best color, but I'm going to try my best. Okay, so we got the coloring part all done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the camel skin, the camel hair. Okay, we're gonna make little pieces here. Cut, cut. Okay. Now either, I'm just gonna put glue, like little sections by sections, and then add it on together like this. Oh, this is a little too long. Okay. Oh. It can get a little sticky, so make sure you have a wipe or you have time to wash your hands later. Or, whatever you do, don't wipe it on your clothes. Ta-da, that looks like it has good texture. Okay. Make sure it stays nice and dry. Oops, let me do this last section. And then if you have like brown string, that'll be good to do it around the belt. You can have that, so we're gonna skip that for right now. And then you have this as your final product. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Isn't John a wonderful example of what it means to follow Jesus? John was an amazing person, but he recognized that he was nothing compared to Jesus and told everyone to follow Jesus. Boys and girls, I hope that you will be humble like John and follow Jesus. When we do, our sins will be forgiven and we will have eternal life. Have a blessed week.